Hi everyone. We're back for yet another video on angular momentum. Recall that in the previous videos, we've looked at a generalized body, A. We discretized it into infinitely many points, B sub I. We started with uh, Newton's second law. We said the sum of forces is the change in linear momentum. We took this description and then we generalized it for a rigid body, so this is true for both particles and for bodies with volume. We then asked the question, what about the moment that the forces create from that? We were able to get Euler's second law for, uh, for the sum of moments about a body's center of mass. And then another video we asked, well, if we can take the moments about the center of mass, then of course we can take the moments about another point as well. So instead of taking the moments at A, what if we took the moments at C? And of course, we said that this is not equal to DDT of the angular momentum about, uh, of A about A. Now, what we did do is we did, uh, instead of finding the angular momentum of A at A, instead we found the angular momentum of A about that new point C. So in today's video, what we would like to do is we'd like to put these last few things together and what we're going to attempt to determine is whether or not this is true. If we can say that the sum of moments on A about A is equal to the change in angular momentum at A about A, can we, we're asking the question, can we say that the moments of A about C is equal to the change in the angular momentum of A about C? Well. Let's start with, uh, let, let's go back to our original descriptions of how we came up with these. If we want the sum of moments on A about C, and we're going to discretize this, then that means we look at all of the moments on each of these B sub I's about C, and then we sum all of those up. Well, what are the moments of B about C? So infinite summation, this is the position vector from C to B sub I cross the sum of forces on B sub I. And of course, we know from uh, Newton's second law that this is going to become so sum of moments on A about C this is the infinite summation of the position vector from C to BI cross. Now, the sum of forces is the change in linear momentum. So this is DDT of KBI. Okay. What now was angular momentum? Recall that angular momentum, the way that we approached this, we know eventually this turned into this modified inertia matrix multiplied by the angular velocity. But the initial description of this was the moment, we're going to take the position vector C to BI cross KBI. All right, so we have these two descriptions now. And again, what was it we were looking for today? We want to determine whether or not the sum of moments on A about C is equal to the change, DDT, of HAC. Well, I have the left side of the equation. Here it is. Let's uh, erase this and just slide it over a little. of KBI, and again, we are asking the question, is this equal to DDT of the term uh, underneath, so this side? Uh, and, oop, yep, left off that infinite summation. There we go. So are these two things now equivalent? There we go. 
So the left hand side, this was the this was the sum of moments on A about C, and then the right hand side, we're taking DDT of angular momentum of A about C, and we can very quickly see that these are not the same thing. Notice that on the left hand side, the DDT is connected to only the angular momentum, whereas on the right hand side, the DDT is attached to the whole term. So what this tells us is that these are not equal to each other. We would really like for them to be. That would make it nice and easy. And then it would have a similar form to uh, Euler's second law about center of mass. But clearly we're missing something here. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave the left-hand side as it is, and we're just going to call this sum of moments on A about C. And then really what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into this term on the right, and we're going to attempt to recover this portion plus something else. So uh, let's erase this and let's get started. The first thing we can do is a product rule expansion. So let's take this and break it into two terms. DDT of H A C. Now I'm going to move the DDT inside of the infinite summation. So we're looking at D T C to B I over DT cross M BI, I'm going to replace the linear momentum with MBI VBI plus, and here's the second term, infinite summation of PCBI cross DDT of KBI. Now at this point, note that the second term on the right hand side, this second term is actually the sum of moments on A about C. So let's rewrite this, DDT of HAC equals, here's our sum of moments on A about C plus, and now here's this new term that we have to deal with. Uh, what we can do is we can, uh, first thing, take note that uh, this derivative we can write uh, DDT of the position vector as V from C to B sub I. Now, one thing to take note of about this when I write uh, V from C to B I, this is of course a relative velocity. Uh, consider that this could have both a slip and a tangential component. So this term that I've just written includes um, a translation and also a uh, transport theorem. So V C B I, uh, cross MBI, and let's do a replacement on VBI, and let's say that this is VC plus the relative velocity from C to B sub I. And again, just like, uh, just like this one, this relative velocity, that could include uh, both slip and tangential. Now, we can separate this into two pieces. So DDT of H A C, this is equal to, just gonna bring this sum of moments down, plus. Now one of these is going to be cross product, uh, uh, VCBI cross product VCBI. So let's go ahead and, and write that one first. Infinite summation of, and I'll put the mass out front, it's a scalar, we can move it around, uh, VCBI cross, VCBI. That's the, the second term here. Uh, and since this is the same uh, vector cross itself, this is of course equal to zero. And plus, uh, now this new term, and we're going to do a little expansion on that in just a moment, but let's just get it down. So VCBI cross MBI V. C. Okay, <clears throat> so let's erase just a little bit. Here's what we had. Next, let's do a replacement on the V C to B I. We know that we can actually uh, back this up. We can say that uh, V C to B I is DDT of P C to B I. And we can also decompose this position vector as well. Suppose that we said the position vector from 
A to B I was equal to P A to C plus P C to B sub I. If we want to solve for the P C to B I, then this is of course P A B I minus P A C. So let's take this position vector, let's put it inside of a DDT, and then let's put it into this velocity. So DDT, HAC equals, I'm going to bring down this sum of moments. Plus. Now, uh, notice that the VC is constant with respect to the summation, and also note that uh, the mass, we're assuming the mass does not change. So, uh, just doing a little uh, organizing here, I'm going to say that this is DDT of infinite summation of MVI, and then I'm going to bring in the position vector PABI minus PAC. Now, it was DDT of this term, uh, and then it is cross the VC. Now, what are we going to do? First of all, let's bring down these knowns, DDT, HAC, and sum of moments, A about C. We can take this term and we can break it into two, plus DDT of, here's the first one, infinite summation of MBI P ABI cross VC and then minus DT infinite summation MBI we have the second position vector now PAC and it's that quantity cross VC so what's going to happen here? Well, we have seen this term crop up numerous times now, and we know that this term, this is equal to zero. So let's just bring down what's left over. DDT, HAC is equal to some moments, now minus. The only thing now in this last term that is, uh, that's being iterated over, the only thing left with the i is the mbi. So we can just perform the infinite summation on mbi's and we're going to get ma. And since we're doing rigid body dynamics, we're assuming the mass does not change. That means the mass can go outside of the DDT and we're left with just DDT of PAC. So what we're going to get with all of that is we're gonna have ma, times VAC cross VC. And there's nothing more, there's no other reductions that we can do with this term. So let me, uh, let me just do a little bit of quick erasing. This is how that expression is usually represented. We have the sum of moments on one side, change in angular momentum, and then here's that new term that's coming along for the ride. And again, one thing to note about this VAC term, that is the total relative velocity. It could contain both a, uh, a slip and a tangential velocity. So uh, sometimes you will see this uh, in literature, you'll see this in the textbook. Since this is a total velocity, you will see a script in the top left corner uh, of an N. Recall that our body has its own frame, but it is moving in an inertial reference frame. So this denotes that it's the total, uh, total velocity with respect to that end frame, meaning that it contains the slip and also uh, transport theorem, the, the tangential velocities. Now, uh, recall we said that HAC, we know that this is minus MAPAC cross VC, and then plus this modified inertia times omega MA. So what's going to happen when we take HAC and we put it into this equation and then we take DDT? Well, consider that these terms already look very similar. So let's see what happens.
the sum of moments on A about C is going to equal, let's take HAC and do the DDT. So DDT of, uh, let's put the inertia first, IAC omega NA minus MAPAC cross, oh, that's supposed to be VC. And then plus this term down at the end. So plus MA VAC, that's in the, with respect to the inertial frame, cross VC. All right. First, we can distribute the DDT, of course. So DDT of IAC omega NA. Well, you could do a product rule expansion on this. And consider that all of these quantities, these are in the body attached frame. So IAC is the distribution of mass around the, the geometry. So uh, again, we're assuming that that is constant. So DDT of the IAC is zero. Now DDT of omega in A is going to be omega in A dot. And since this is in body frame, we also have transport theorem on this. So uh, omega in A cross IAC omega in A. Now, what is going to happen with this term? Well, DDT of this term, again, you can do a product rule expansion. DDT of MA, we're saying that MA is constant. DDT of PAC, well, we want to take the derivative of that and we're going to get uh, again, you could have slip and you could have tangential components. So let's write this as minus MA, the relative velocity from A to C with respect to the inertial frame, cross VC. DDT of VC, we're going to drop down to the line underneath. This is minus MA. PAC cross VC dot. And then we have uh, this additional term. So plus MA VAC in the inertial frame cross VC. So conveniently, these terms are going to cancel. And our final answer is going to be this. The sum of moments on A about C is equal to, I'm going to bring this remaining term to the front, so minus MA PAC cross VC dot. Uh, these cancel out, and that takes care of, uh, again, the, the slip and also transport theorem on those. We have plus IAC omega NA dot. Uh, and then the transport theorem term. So plus omega in A cross IAC omega in A. Now, let's compare that to Euler's second law. Now, we know the standard uh, most general form of Euler's second law about center of mass. We know that that is DT of HAA. If we expand this, We're looking at DDT of IAA, omega NA. Product rule expansion, we know that IAA is constant. We're going to get IAA, omega NA dot. And this one also has transport theorem as well. So omega NA cross IAA, omega NA. So let's take this answer and let's bring it up and we can directly now compare these two results. IAA omega NA dot plus omega NA cross IAA omega NA. All right, so these are the two forms, the two final forms of Euler's second law. The one on bottom is Euler's second law about a, uh, a body's own center of mass. You're taking your moments on body A about point A. And the one above it now is for any generalized arbitrary point. So the moments on A about point C. And 
consider that uh, you could actually just keep this one. And if C is point A, then consider that the position vector from A to A is zero. That takes care of this one. Um, and then this inertia about point C, well, that's simply the inertia about point A. So these now, these are our finished Euler second laws. We can combine these with Newton's second law. We know the sum of forces on A is going to be uh, DDT of MA VA. And as long as the mass is constant, we're not uh, burning propellant or anything, then this is MA VA dot. This is now the final form of our equations of motion. Um, and just consider for any problem where we want to generate the equations of motion, this is now where we start. We have these finished equations. So uh, that's it for this video. So long, folks, and I will see you next time.